And now, live from the studios of Freedom's Phoenix, Ernest Hancock. Love ain't the same on the south side of town. You could look, but you ain't gonna find it around. It's the same old story, same old song and dance, my friend. It's the same yeah, it old story. always is. Same, same old story, same old story, story same old song, song and dance here. I just and That song just keeps coming to mind every time I... I look at any news, you know, I, I, I rarely watch cable after I got my dose of, uh, Libya and Japan and, uh, Iran and this and that, and, you know, I'm okay. I'm off cable news again. Now I just did it for a few days. Kind of, I'm wow. I, you're not getting the, tr- we get more up to date truth on freedoms Phoenix and from the input of all the reporters and editors than from any of that. I give you an example. When I first started doing radio, I, uh, you know, you, you, I subscribed to the local newspaper because I was doing morning show here. You had to at least, you know, make fun of them. And I called them the back of my fries electronics ad. Well, the back of my fries electronics ad says, uh, you know, my, my birdcage liner, my fish wrap, you know, that put down that fish wrap, freshen up your coffee, turn up the radio. It's Ernest Hancock on declare, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we did that. And, and the thing that I wanted to uh, emphasize is that, we got at least three days to three weeks ahead on a story that they would report way after we did. And it was, I could see what was going on. They never reported the news, you know, it was spin on the olds. And I'm going, okay, so that's what it's all about. It's just spin. Well, <clears throat> we have a lot of great light writers that contribute. I'm Freedom's Phoenix, and one of those is Bill Bonner. Now, uh, Bill Bonner and Addison Wigan, they are uh, right. They did um, Empire of Debt. Now, this was in the mid two thousands, and I remember when that book came out. It just, you know, wow. That and other ones like Crossing the Rubicon and some other economic economic books of which Charles Goyette's The Dollar Meltdown is a great piece that, you know, we had them on his show as his producer and talked about this stuff. And and Charles is going to be in Tuesday talking about the Chinese and Korean translations publication of his book, The Dollar Meltdown. And we're going to be talking about Atlas Shrugged and the impact that will have culturally. Oh, and I just got an email from senior editor Pal Gamble said that because of so many people have already advanced purchased yesterday. It just went available yesterday, 5 p.m. for one day showing Friday, April 15th. They extended the release for a week. They go, you know what? Okay, I guess we can go a week. (laughs) And uh, start promoting it. We'll get posters from them. We'll put it out. We'll be all stupid on this thing. So this is, you know, it, it, it worked. And we're happy to be part of that and be able to show some enthusiasm for it. And they extended the showing there. And it's an all-day, everyday thing. I, I'm like, cool, cool. I, I was afraid they are going to sell out and you weren't going to be able to see it. That's why I wanted to hurry up and get the tickets. And I guess they had enough sales that they said, you know what? We make some money on this thing. Let's do it. And okay, well, that's good. It's always about money. Well, Bill Bonner, you know, he... Uh, has a lot of good things to say. They make a gazillion dollars on selling newsletters. I mean, to get some of their newsletters, like Doug Casey and Bonner and these guys, you pay thousands of dollars a year just to get their little inside tips. But these are from people that you know aren't just regurgitating the pablum from what they get from the government or something, or their lackeys. They're actually out making money for their supporters and, and subscribers. Well, they're right. But that doesn't get you on, being right doesn't get you on CNN or Fox News without being made fun of. You know, just ask, uh, you know, Scharf or Schiff, I'm sorry, Peter Schiff. You know, you go and, and of course they'll laugh at you. Say, ah, ha, 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 ha. See, and then being right, I guess that doesn't matter either. So Bill has this uh, article. It was an interview they did on Daily Bell. Is uh, It's kind of a libertarian, a few stories a day out of Europe that we post a lot on Freedom's Phoenix, get some stuff from. Charles told me about it. So here it is. Daily Bell is asking Bill Bonner, is America headed for a recovery or another recession? Bill says neither. It is in a great correction of the great credit expansion that began after World War II. This will continue for many years to come and probably lead to enough excess money printing that the feds by the feds to create a hyperinflationary blow up. 
This will be the end of the monetary system that was set up almost unwittingly in August of 1971 when we went off the, the gold standard. This is what prompted Dr. Paul to start running for office and predicting this was coming. And I'm sure he's shocked it took this long, but it's always good to be right before you die. That, that, that's good. So I'm happy about that for him. More than that, hyperinflation will shake the foundations of modern political, social, and economic institutions and probably bring many of them down. The social welfare state, for example, was invented by Germany's Iron Chancellor Otto von Bismarck before more than a century and a half ago. In their late degenerate form, they depend on delivering benefits to the present while pushing the cost in the form of national debt onto the future. A bout of hyperinflation will make this model inoperable because governments will be unable to finance further huge deficits at low rates. It will also mark the end of Keynesian interventionism as it will be obvious that central financial planning doesn't work. Daily Bell asks, why has Bernanke been so relentless about money pumping? Bonner replies, he believes he has to fight the great correction. Daily Bell asks, putting everything together as it is, as if the powers that be are pushing and shoving toward maximum chaos, can it all be coincidence or is there a purpose behind it? Out of chaos, a new world order, and a single currency? Bill says, hmm, again, this presumes more of a grand design and more control than the powers that be actually have. Daily Bill asks, given all the uncertainty, where would you be investing now? Bonner and gold and silver both remain good investments. This idea of a social welfare state to gain popularity and to uh, uh, vote for me or whatever. This has been going on for you know a century and a half. And he's stating that it, the social welfare state started with the chancellor in Germany a long time ago, Mr. Bismarck. So it, it, is it finally run its course? I mean, it, backing this all up has been the United States and the U.S. dollar. How's that working out? And what other distractions do they have? You know, it's always, uh, you know, yeah, but we're, we're, we're supported by the church. You know, the Pope said it was okay. You know, I, I got a, a little Christian thing on my lapel. I, you know, it's always something like that. Well, we're getting it here in Arizona. The next story is about Mark Victor, my friend and partner in the Freedom Summit, criminal defense attorney here. He filed a lawsuit that, you know, the Ides of March on the 15th, and we started talking about this week, he filed a lawsuit against the governor of Arizona, Jan Brewer, for declaring a day of prayer. Now, if Jan Brewer, the person, did it and wanted to whatever, and they had private uh, entities, and she wanted to go and participate, what I don't care, you know. But you spend a half a cent on some letterhead and proclamation as a governor and, you know, send it out to the hinterlands as a, you know, just a, you know, it's just a PR stunt. And uh, the Lord has given us a good day as we, and she, you know, and, and being a man of faith, I just find that, ew, I don't need the government to, so he files suit. My, a good friend, Jim Sharp, is a morning uh, talk show host here in the Valley on the Clear Channel station. And uh, I had Mark on the morning that we had him later in the day. He came from there, did some NBC interviews and such, and then came on the show last Friday. Uh, Jim Sharp offered to be, I'm a man of faith. I will join your lawsuit. So he's added to the lawsuit as a Christian. Doesn't want the government to wrap themselves in a flag, carry a cross, and say all the stuff that they do is in God's name. What happens when a society is willing, even a popular talk show host on a clear channel station joins a lawsuit against such things? What does that say about our culture? Certainly here in Arizona. I don't know, the bad guys aren't liking it none too much. We got more news when we come back. <laughs> 